Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome back to the mini series in which I teach you how to code your very own Discord bot. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to code your bot to respond to different events, such as when somebody sends a message, when somebody deletes their message, when the bot goes online and offline. In the last video, we kind of just set up our bot as well as setting up a single event that will run whenever our bot actually goes online. But of course, bots are supposed to do much, much more, and I'm going to be teaching you how to respond to different events in this video. It's very easy to do. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so over here, I am pretty much on my, uh, on my main Python page from the last video. Again, I'm inside of Visual Studio Code. And Visual Studio Code is the IDE of choice that I've been using kind of to uh, code this particular bot in. So you can see over here, I, and kind of recapping from what I did in the last video, this function right over here called onReady basically is an event that runs whenever our client actually goes online. And what we programmed our bot to do was when it goes online, it's going to find the general channel right over here and it's going to send a message to that channel. And the message it's going to send is hello world. So what I want to do is I actually change. So I'm going to go back into Discord over here and I'm going to uh, not switch anything. So over here, I kind of have my general, uh, my general new Discord page. So I changed my user, that way I don't actually have to blur it out anymore as well as I kind of cleared out this general uh, this general channel. Now in doing so, I actually had to generate a new, an actual new channel here, so there will be a new ID. If you remember from the previous video, when we actually need to find what channel we want to send a message to, we actually need to write client.get channel and then provide an ID for that channel. And that way we'll be able to look through all of the channels within our Discord server, find the right channel we want, and then we can use that channel to do things with, such as send a message. So last video, I taught you how to right click and then there would be a copy ID button. However, for some people that may not show up. So actually how to get this ID is you click and then in your message, you simply do uh, a backslash and then you actually, um, here you can do general, to access kind of or to refer to the channel and you can see that once you do a backslash the number symbol the pound symbol or the hashtag and then you put the name of the of the actual channel you can see that it prints out this entire uh, text over here and the numbers from after the number symbol all the way to the end of this greater than symbol that is your ID so I'm going to copy this I'm going to switch over back to my Python code and I'm going to paste it right over here, replacing the ID that I had from the last video. So let's actually see if everything that we did works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my play button, which runs my Python code. Now, one thing which I did want to uh, mention is that you want to make sure that your Python is set to 3.6 uh, or above. So you can see here on the bottom right, I actually have it. I actually have it set to Python 3.8. So that is just important to make sure that you actually set it correctly. If you set it to Python 2, it's not going to work as expected. So make sure it is Python 3 and above. So I'm going to save my code. And now that I've changed my ID, and I'm going to press the Run button. And you can see that over here, my bot prints out Hello World right when it goes online. And it sends it to the general channel. So this is just one simple event that we added into our bot. Whenever we go online, we're going to send a message. But now what if we want our bot to do something whenever somebody else in the channel sends a message? And for that, there's actually a very special event. So what I can do is just like how I did up here on line seven, I need to include the at symbol client dot event, just like this. And what this symbol allows you to do is it basically says the function after this will be registered as an event for the actual Discord bot. And now the name of the actual event function that we want to put in is called onMessage. So there, so how we type it is going to be very similar to the uh, to the one of here. We type in async death to create an asynchronous uh, function, and then we type in the name of the function, which is going to be onMessage right over here. And then I have open close parentheses and I have a colon and then all of my code for my on message function will be indented. 
Now, one of the things that I actually did want to mention is that this function is unique because it takes in a message parameter. And what this means is that this function here is going to run whenever somebody sends a message on the Discord server. And that message is going to be inputted here as a actual parameter. So if I do a, or if I tab and then I access message, you can see message here is an object we could, which we can actually access certain parameters of. And so what I can do over here is generally, you don't want the bot to respond to every message. However, you may want it to respond to certain messages. For example, if somebody says something that they shouldn't, then the, maybe the bot can take care of that. Or if you're trying to, or if the user is trying to actually put a command into the bot, that this is how it can differentiate between commands. So for example, let's say I wanted to run my, uh, or I want to give a response, or I want my bot to send a response whenever somebody types in, what is the version of the bot? So what I can do over here is I can simply say, if message equals, and then I can have quotes. So I can just say here, let's say I do, um, what is the version, all lowercase and no capital letters and no uh, punctuation. So one thing is that you wanna make sure when you do something like this, it will be exact. It does account. So it is case sensitive, it is punctuation sensitive. So I could say if message equals what is the version, then I can send a message to general. And in order to send a message to general, I'm actually gonna copy the code I had up here, which gets my general channel as well as sends a message to it. But you wanna make sure that your indents are proper so that it is within this if statement. So I am essentially what I'm doing is I'm getting my general channel and I am setting it to client.getChannel where I put in my ID. What this does is it, find, it goes to the actual Discord server here and looks for the exact channel with this ID and then it uh, sets it to the general underscore channel variable. Then over here, I just say await general underscore channel dot send and then I can send a message. So let's say I want my message to say the version is 1.0. I can type that in, the version is 1.0. And now I can save my code. I can click the little trash can right next to my terminal window in Visual Studio Code to end the process and then rerun the process. All right, so there's actually one other thing that we have to do over here. So in our if statement, we don't just say message, we have to say message.content to actually access the content of our message. So I'm going to run this code right over here, or I'm going to save it. I'm going to click the trash can again and run it. And now if I go over back to my actual server, you can see that it sends hello world, meaning that it turned on. And now if I were to send in what, or I were to send the message that I specified over here, what is the version? And I click enter you can see that the bot returns the version is 1.0. Now, if I were to type in anything else, you will see that it does not respond to that. The on, because we added this if statement here, the on message function will only send anything to our channel if the message is equivalent to what is the version, just like this. And message.content is a string, so you can actually do many different things. For example, you can set this, you can lower, make the content lowercase. So you can actually, uh, you can set this to either be lowercase, uppercase. You could say that if the content starts with something or ends with something, there are many different things that you can do with text. And that is just one example of an event that we can add into our Discord bot. But there are so many other events. And all of these events are actually listed here on the official documentation website. And this is where I wanted to show you kind of how all of this works. So if you go to the website that I, um, or the link that I provide in the uh, comment section or description below, and you go to this right side of your table of contents and click on a re event reference, this gives an entire list of all of the different events that you can do inside of your, or add inside of your Discord bot. And of course, there are so many that we can't go over all of them. However, they all work in a very similar way. For example, over here, we have discord.onDisconnect, right? Which says here that once the uh, client has disconnected from Discord, then it will run something. So for example, I can easily add that in a very similar way I did on ready. I can simply say at client dot event and then async async def and then I have to copy the name which is listed over here 
So let's uh, let's scroll back to it. I think I missed it right over here. It says on disconnect. So I can just copy this on disconnect right over here. And then I can do um, a colon. And now I can simply do something whenever this disconnects. So I can say here, for example, goodbye. And whenever then my, my actual bot disconnects from the channel, then it is going to send it. And generally it disconnects when you click on this little trash can, but it does take a while. So it may not be the necessarily the best to actually show on this particular video. Perhaps I could kick it and see if it does the same thing. So let's run it and just see. If I run my code, you can see it should say hello world once everything is ready, which it does. And now if I right click on this bot and I kick it right over here, which I actually don't want to do because if I do kick it, it's going to um, make me re-add it. So I am not going to kick it. But there are many different things that you can do. So this is the way that you would add, for example, the on disconnect event. If I go over here to the documentation, there's something like on air. So if there's an error, then it can work with the error. You can see over here on typing. So when someone begins typing a message, it can say um, it can do something as somebody is typing. And you can specify a channel, a user, and all of these. There is on message delete. So when someone deletes a message with a certain text, it can actually do something as well. And these are all different things that you can do that basically follows the exact same method as these. It follows the exact same uh, structure in how we add it. You have to add the at client.event tag above the function. You have async death and then the name of the function open close parentheses, and it will tell you whether or not there is a parameter that is necessary. For example, if I go back to my documentation and I go to on message, which is right over here, you can see that on message takes in a message object right over here. And that you may, you have to make sure that you specify and you can see that they're exactly the same. Over here, I write on, on underscore message, open parentheses, message, close parentheses. That is the exact same as what is bold on this side. Now, if I scroll all the way up to, you can see we're on ready, on ready over here and on ready in my code are also the same. And because there is no parameter in the documentation here, there is no parameter in my Python file either. And there are so many things that you can do with events that, for example, um, there are like, see, you can see on reaction ads when a user adds a specific reaction, when a reaction is removed, there are so many things that you can actually do with this particular or with events specifically. And once you do it, you just have to make sure that you stop the process and rerun the process. And then your bot will be working perfectly fine on whatever channel you choose in your actual discord server. All right, everyone, that is a quick intro to events and adding events into your Discord bot. If you have any questions or if any errors occur, definitely leave them in the comment section below and I will try my best to help you. If you'd like the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.